Uh, well, it uh, is my pleasure to uh, welcome everybody here today. Uh, I'm Brian Waddingham uh, with the Coalition to Support Iowa's Farmers. Also want to recognize uh, Kent Maurer in the back there at the computer as our senior field coordinator and Rita Cook uh, as our assistant field specialist. So as we get going through the conference today, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, seek one of us out and we'll do our best to answer it or point you in the right direction uh, to someone who can. Just uh, again, really want to welcome everybody here today. Um, you know, you're attending the first of its kind workshop here in the state of Iowa, uh, really focusing on Iowa's newest livestock industry, which is fish farming. And I, I think that's really exciting. And uh, you're going to hear a lot of presentations today talking uh, uh, about opportunities in aquaculture production. Uh, as well as some of the things that you need to consider as you move forward into entering uh, into uh, aquaculture production. Uh, for those of you um, that uh, aren't familiar with the coalition to support Iowa's farmers, uh, we are here to help Iowa's livestock farmers grow successfully and responsibly. <laughs> Uh, we are here to help farmers site new livestock facilities, um, help interpret rules and regulations, bring sons and daughters back to the farm, uh, as well as enhance neighbor relations and, uh, and even plant trees around livestock farms. Uh, we do not enforce or fine farmers. We don't lobby. We don't develop policy. Don't require a membership or even charge for our services. Uh, we are here to help the livestock farmer. And uh, who makes our work possible is Iowa's commodity groups, the Cattlemen's Association, the Corn Growers, Farm Bureau, Iowa Pork, Iowa Soybean, Midwest Dairy, as well as the Iowa Turkey Federation. And uh, the coalition, we have been around now for 10 years. Uh, in May, we celebrated our 10-year anniversary. And to date, we've helped just under 3,000 livestock farmers with questions uh, about their farms. And um, I guess with today's um, conference, you're going to see that there are a lot of opportunities in Iowa's livestock industry today, whether it's cattle, hogs, dairy, turkeys, or even fish farming. But I think it's even more critical today than ever that you have a plan for growth. And uh, hopefully today's conference, you're going to hear from speakers that are going to lay some things out, make you think about things uh, before you jump right into aquaculture production. And uh, with that, I guess I'll, uh, I'll stop, but again, want to welcome everybody to the 2014 Aquaculture Conference, and it's now my pleasure. I'm going to introduce John Lawrence. I'm going to say a few words about him and uh, have him come up to the podium. But uh, John Lawrence is uh, Associate Dean for Extension here at Iowa State University in the College of Ag and Life Sciences and Director, Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension. In this position, he leads the extension and outreach programs to farmers, agribusiness, and natural resource managers in the state of Iowa. He also serves as director of the Iowa Nutrient Research Center. This Regent Center was established and funded by the 2013 legislature to provide for a continued research foundation to water quality improvement in Iowa. So with that, I would like to have John Lawrence come to the podium. Well, good morning, everyone. I appreciate you folks coming out on this cold day and driving down to Ames. I guess we don't have to worry about staying home to put on anhydrous. I don't think you can quite break through the frost yet. Uh, it's good to see a crowd this size in agriculture these days. I've spent most of my career in the hog industry and the cattle industry and, and have been learning about crops. And a lot of those crowds were getting smaller and smaller over time. So it's exciting to see interest in a new venture such as fish farming here in Iowa. Uh, and also notice, uh, and although Rita pointed it out to me, but when was the last time you went to a farm meeting where you had a centerpiece and white tablecloth on the table? Uh, that's not an accident. Uh, this fish farming gets you that much closer to the consumer and oftentimes high-end consumers. And it's a little different perspective than just hauling a load of corn into the co-op and waving goodbye, not knowing if it ends up in ethanol or uh, overseas someplace or in cattle feed. So uh, a different different venture altogether. It's also encouraging uh, just looking kind of at the hair color or the amount of hair in the room that this is a younger audience than we often deal with. And I, I think that is a great, a great thing as well. So uh, I'll admit my, uh, uh, my experience in fish farming is very limited. I consider myself a practicing quadru uh, quadru Quadrupedrian, if it doesn't walk on land on four legs, I'd just as soon not eat it. Uh, so that, 
uh, kind of rules out vegetables and fish along the way, but I, I do see the opportunity here. Uh, two years ago this coming spring, uh, Bill Northey and I and Brian Waddingham uh, visited the Nielsen farm, a uh, fish farm. They've probably had more visitors and got more press in the ag, ag industry in the last two years than just about anybody out there. Our value-added ag group, Ray Hansen and Dan Burden and some of his folks have been working with the Nilsons for a while, but got to see firsthand what, what this may look like. They, of course, started with remodeled hog buildings, uh, brought in the fish tanks, but it was not, uh, not for the faint-hearted. It was uh, coming in large-scale, professionally run, professionally managed from day one. And I think that's the other exciting thing about this is it builds on the professionalism we already have here in agriculture, the experience we have in managing uh, crops and livestock, but puts that to use in a new venture. It's also exciting, and I'm sure we'll hear about, there's other people looking at this besides just Iowa farmers, but that would be willing to bring in the processing part of it, the marketing part of it, the, and, and really put this whole supply chain together. So, uh, Excited to, to learn more about this, as I'm sure you are as well. Now on to the important task of the day. Uh, one is to welcome you here to Iowa State. We consider this research park as part of our campus. Uh, for those of you who are familiar, we're just across Highway 30 here from the stadium and then on the central campus. It's a busy place this time of the year. Uh, up until last week, it was an interesting mix between fur coats and flip-flops, uh, but now everybody is pretty much converted. I've only seen one person without a coat on yesterday, and I had to question his wisdom at that choice. But it's a, a busy place because we're at record enrollment. We're at uh, 34,700 some students, an all-time uh, high for the second or third year in a row. Within the College of Ag and Life Sciences, we've set records as well. We're just short of 4,500 undergraduates, and those numbers continue to grow, and grow because of opportunities such as this. And so, uh, it's, for those of you who went to Iowa State here, uh, you'll recognize a lot of it, but it's a lot busier, the lines are longer, uh, it's a lot more crowded, and it's, and it's still just as exciting and just as fun. My other important task today, and I'm going to get to it now, is to introduce Secretary of Agriculture Bill Northey. Uh, I've known Bill for a long time and have worked closely with him on a variety of projects and consider him a good friend, and certainly Bill is a great friend for agriculture. I'm sure most of you saw the announcement that he was reelected. Uh, actually, he got more votes than any other politician on the ballot, including the governor and the senator. So uh, Bill is very popular in this state and with good reason. Bill is a fourth generation farmer from Spirit Lake, Iowa that grows corn and soybeans. He told me he was done harvesting and he had the luxury of not having to haul all that much this year, which he wasn't sure if that was a good thing or not. Uh, he started farming in 1981 after graduating with Iowa, from Iowa State University, a, a, a degree in agribusiness, started farming with his grandfather. He's uh, in his second term now, and I think this will be your third election that was just completed. Uh, Secretary Northey is committed to traveling the state. Each year he visits all 99 counties to talk to farmers in rural Iowans. Uh, and, and those who have a stake in the future of agriculture. These have allowed him to listen to their needs and better understand how the D Iowa Department of Ag and Land Stewardship can help move Iowa forward, Iowa agriculture forward for the, to help serve its state uh, and the people. His priorities have been advancing the science and new technologies to better take care of the air, soil, and water, and reaching out to Iowans to tell the story of agriculture. For those of you who are on Facebook, how many of you are one of Bill's friends on Facebook? Just to show of hands here. Uh, yeah, uh, he probably has uh, more friends on Facebook than just about anybody I know. So, a uh, friend of agriculture and a friend to us here at Iowa State, Bill Northy. <laughs> Well, thank you, John. Appreciate uh, being with you all this morning. Thank you for uh, being a part of this meeting. A uh, lot of interesting stuff happening in agriculture. As John mentioned, my harvest, I, I farm just east of Spear Lake, and, and the reason I didn't have a lot to haul is because we got some hail in June, and I think it's a great year for a poor crop. The prices are down, you know. Why, why produce so much anyway? I'm just trying to help you all out, you know. You all have big crops, and I'm trying to make it more valuable. Um, but... Uh, 
Uh, I love my job as Secretary of Ag, being able to get around and see what's going on. And uh, isn't this a great group? Isn't this a great topic? Uh, thank you all for being here. There's some folks in here that know an awful lot about aquaculture and the opportunities that are here. I'm sure there's some folks that uh, just said this sounds interesting and, and this is your first or second or third conversation about it. Uh, some of those folks are at your table. Uh, so certainly enjoy the conversations that you all have at the table. There's some real experts in Iowa. You may or may not realize that um, on aquaculture. You're gonna hear from some of them. You'll have a chance to be able to meet some of them here. Uh, there's a lot of interest in the opportunities that are here. So, um, you know, just, just as context, um, again, uh, obviously we have an amazing state for agriculture. Lots of different ways. We can grow lots of stuff here, uh, and we do. Uh, we grow more corn than all but three countries in the world. Only the U.S., China, and Brazil grow more corn in the state of Iowa. And it doesn't happen on one big, massive farm out there. It happens one farm at a time, one person deciding whether they're going to go out and clean up a few acres, you know, this morning when the ground freezes over or not, and whether they're going to fight the line at the elevator or whether they're going to dry at home or whatever else. All those decisions get made by individuals, all those folks buy something from somebody to get the right kind of seed and the right kind of fertilizer and herbicide or, or other ways of, of managing their crop and they get to decide where they go and that's the thing that has made agriculture so special here. We've developed all that from the innovation of growing things to the innovation of helping folks grow these activities. You know, there's only four countries that produce more soybeans than the state of Iowa. Um, and that is the U.S., Brazil, Argentina, and China. And over time, as China continues to decrease, I think we're likely to be down to just three countries um, on, the, on the soybean side as well. And then we have this wonderful livestock industry that's in this state. Again, can you imagine folks 50 years ago looking at what we all have now and the genetics that are out there and the way that we manage, you know, be able to control diseases and the animals that we have. I mean, I remember I used to, used to raise some pigs and my pigs got pretty fat at 220 pounds. <laughs> and uh, now you got some pretty doggone lean 300 pound hogs out there that carry an awful lot of meat. They're way more efficient than the stuff that that we all tried to raise 20 years ago. And, and the innovation that happens, I, I, I'm excited to hear about the innovation that you're all going to be a part of. Um, this stuff comes from individuals making decisions and trying things, talking to your friends and neighbors. And again, we have a lot at stake to get together. And uh, while we'll you know, certainly have some competition between each other from time to time, for the most part, this is an industry that as we grow this together, it'll create more opportunities for everybody. More processing opportunities, maybe more feed mills that'll be able to get the feed just the way that you want it. Um, certainly as you learn from each other, that'll make both you and, your, and, and the folks that you're working with more successful. Uh, so I think this is a great industry that can use the innovation of Iowa agriculture uh, to make happen. Um, I think, you know, this would be one of those days, I think you want to put a little star in the calendar, remember this first kind of gathering of folks around this industry in a large, large number of folks. And you are here, you're a part of it. I'm sure it's not the last by a long, long ways. There'll be others, there were others that, uh, they were very interested in being able to come here as well, and there'll be other events. Uh, so uh, thank you for your interest in this. Uh, thank you for especially those folks that have really engaged in it um, and are going to share some of their expertise and their vision for this and for everybody's interest and willingness to step out and look at something different. It's exactly what, uh, looking back at old numbers, and in 1960, I think of... The, the farmers at that age, um, or at that time, that they were producing twice as much as, as their parents, three times as much as their grandparents. In Iowa, average corn yield in Iowa was 75.5 bushels an acre. And my guess is it would have been very easy for somebody in 1960 to say, you know, we got it mostly all figured out, right? I mean, really, I mean, what else is there to do? I mean, we got like, you know, a 706 or, you know, we got, 
sometimes four row planters. I mean, there's, you know, the amazing technology at that time compared to generations before, and there's no way they could have imagined the kinds of technologies that have come to the market by innovation of, of farmers and those that farmers work with to be able to make this all happen. And my guess is the kinds of things that you'll work on, maybe in your own operation or work with others around aquaculture will, you know, look again 20 years from now, I think certainly like old technology because of the things that you will all do to make that happen. Uh, so uh, get into this, enjoy it, allow that innovation and creativity to happen. Um, certainly welcome to this event and we're glad to have you a part of agriculture in whatever role that you're a part of. Um, we got an exciting future, lots of opportunities. Um, but uh, it's built on the things that you and others have done to get us to this place. We need to tell our story. Uh, we certainly need others outside of agriculture to understand the importance of what you do uh, and allow us to be able to innovate and be creative and do the kinds of things that, that allow more productivity, that allow more people to be able to come back to the farm um, and actually be excited about it. Uh, so we got to continue to tell our story. This is an opportunity to even expand that story. Uh, in fact, I was, uh, we had a, one of, one of the days I was home farming, actually one of my last days farming, um, we had an iPad and, and talked to a West Des Moines fourth grade class, actually four classes, I put them all together and, and I'm on my farm in Spirit Lake and we're talking to these fourth grade classes down in West Des Moines and your, your mind can't help but wonder, okay, what's next? You know, maybe it's your operation, your future operation or current operation. You're able to share that by an iPad with a classroom across Iowa someplace that really opens the mind up of some fourth grader or sixth grader or, or junior in high school that says, wow, I didn't know we did that in Iowa. I'd love to stay here and do something very different than, than what others are doing. And I think I can do it better. And I think I can work with others and I think technologies are going to help us tell that story. And frankly, politically, it's very important that, that we tell that story so folks appreciate what's going on. So again, thank you all for, uh, for being here. Thank you for what you do to make Iowa agriculture so great. Have a great day. Learn a lot from each other as well as uh, from the speakers. Ask your questions. Um, and I think there's a lot of great things that will happen today. And thank you for being a part of it. Appreciate it. Thank you.